success is a measure of from you. Like you define your own success. And I think it's easier to forget, you know, and and fall into that mindset of, well, they have a million and one hits on YouTube. Clearly they're successful. Well, no, not necessarily. Maybe they have money, but they don't they don't define their success financially. Maybe they define it from another frame. You know, success is a personal story. That that's like what makes you successful. Elizabeth, welcome to the show. Hey guys, how are you? What up? Doing well. Doing great. How are you? I'm I'm awesome. It, the sun's shining. It's a beautiful Friday. Mm. Can't Got complain. The beautiful, awesome Funko beautiful Pops Friday. behind you there. Like, let's I know. Go. How bad of a day can it be with, you know, Zoltar from Big behind me, which I think mm. is my favorite right now. I mean, so that that's a that I mean that's a find, right? Oh my god. <laughs> you should have seen me when I found it. It was kind of an embarrassing, like, 80s girl mo- like moment. I was like, oh, my God. My daughter's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, I said, you don't understand. We must watch big, and then you'll get it. So yeah. This is the yeah. whole thing. Now, have you, have you made a wish on it, or do you keep them in the box? Oh, Zoltar's in the box. I, I honestly was so excited. I didn't even think to make a wish. Do you open your Funko Pops? This is not an official first question. I just have, I just, I'm curious. I, I've not yet. And I don't know why. I, I kind of feel like I want to, but, but, but at the same time, I feel like it's a little wrong. Like, it's kind of the thing though. Like, they're, they have collector's value. And if you keep them in there, at some point, they, they go into the trust and they just, they're worth dinero to somebody. That's what and I'm keep like telling once- myself. <laughs> I mean, once they're open, like you just can't turn back and you have this good look, the display, you know, it's good. Yeah, it's good. I say, keep him in the box. You just never know. Yeah. he man staying in the box. need to make a wish. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got He-Man too. See the there. new He-Man coming out? I, I don't. Man, we could be here a while <laughs> talking about <laughs> the Funko Pops. We could. Yeah. This is going to be our entire conversation. You know, we have... <laughs> One episode that never released uh, where we talked about Harry Potter the whole time. Um, <laughs> so our first question, official question that All we right. ask every guest, and I'm, I like your answer. I'm curious to see how it comes about when we talk about navigating difficult conversations. And you said it's not always about you. So ego, the the hard side of ego can get us all pretty aggressively these days, especially when you think about just the political divide of every issue that seems to come up, whether or not to um, cut a single blade of grass or not, seems to make it a political issue these days. How do you make it not always about yourself? Oh, it's hard. Like, it's a lesson that I think I'm practicing always and have only really started to understand. Um, Because, I mean, our ego wants us to be right all the time. Um, but in a conversation, you know, especially in those difficult conversations, take a step back and breathe. That's what I keep telling myself. Because if, if you're so stuck, I know for me, when I'm stuck in my head, it's like, I can't listen. My ears have suddenly turned off. And even though I can hear the words coming out of your mouth, I don't hear the meaning and the energy and like the real underlying issues. Cause usually when we're talking and if it's a really difficult conversation, especially when you think about political, like some of those charged issues, we're so stuck in I'm right. You're wrong. There's only one way. And I think it's really easy to forget. Like, no, there can be multiple and oftentimes, well, usually are more than one answer to this, the question. So I try to keep that as a framework um, and always try to ask myself, where are they coming from with this? Because they have a background and they have a story and they have a filter and it's not about me. And, And I'd like to think that they're having that same thought because then we can really have a dialogue. Like we can talk. Not always the case and also difficult to remember. Like that's them. That's where they are. But you know, take a step back and breathe. 
You said practicing always, but just starting to understand. By the way, everything you just said, totally agree. Um, what is it that you're just starting to understand about it? Really, that it's okay that it's not about me. Like, there's this part, I, I, I mentioned, like, this overachiever in me, right? Um, this part of me that... <sighs> I want to fix things. I don't like there to be conflict, but it's easy for me to take that stuff into the conversation, into these discussions and really learning like, it's okay if we don't come to a, a solution right now. What's more important is that we're starting that process to break down those barriers that we're, we're, you know, just starting to chip away at the surface. And it may take time. There's some issues that our, our country, our world faces right now that are huge and very long lasting and pervasive. And it's going to take more than one conversation before we can really create that change. But it's about chipping away at just every, every chance you can. And it's funny because my husband, that's something that my husband has told me. And I'm like, First of all, in an argument, don't tell your wife that because <laughs> she's probably going <laughs> to be about really, you, really bad. It's saying about you. It's not about you. And I'm looking at him going, what do you mean? My feelings are hurt. How could it not be about me? But um, yeah, it. You. one day I finally was like, oh, I get it. It's not about me. Um, so it, it it's ongoing. <laughs> It's funny because it isn't and it is because like the reaction is 100% about you because like you said, you bring all this stuff in to make it about yourself and not necessarily on purpose, but it just it happens. And we were reminded yesterday that the problem is the problem, not the person. It's and we we conflate that and then we can never actually get to the problem. Like we just start arguing about like what, but you said, and then this one time you did, and it's like, prove it. And it's like, but what, 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 weren't we just trying to figure out how to get the kids to school? Like, <laughs> right, right. And it could be about anything like that. Right. Like it, we, it takes us so far off course from what we're actually talking about because we get so stuck in ego judgment, blame. I gotta be right. Or I got to fix it because it's making me uncomfortable not to. Um, that was a hard one for me to learn because I, I had to realize, like, I, I'm i uncomfortable without there being a solution. But that's not about the problem. That's not about the other person or where they... That's me. That's my stuff. I have to learn to sit and be uncomfortable. So... It's like, well, who's setting the parameters for them? Am I setting the boundaries for how I expect you to act? Thus, I am actually making it about me. I'm not respecting you and your space and whatever it may be. Sure, that example plays in certain areas, but at the end of the day, I think we need to be better at accepting that other people don't have the same boundaries that we do across all these all these little things. The big things we can talk about, but like all these little things. It's not just about you and it's not only yeah, I love it. I love that you mentioned boundaries. I think it's it's knowing who you are, being okay with who you are and understanding you're going to have a boundary but they likely do too. And if we're going to get anywhere you have to understand that as people, we have to respect each other's boundaries. And, and like, you don't want them to overlap yours. Don't overlap theirs. Like, that's not, it, it's got to go both ways. Having kids has really helped me, I think, break down some of this with adults because I care about my kids more than I care about most adults. So, like, I see it when I, don't know, I was reading something. It was like, you have to give them an opportunity to save face because we're human. Like, we want to just save face. And even at a very young age, they have this concept of humiliation and just being embarrassed. And so I can see it happen. It's like, oh, no, like, they, like they, their boundaries have been crossed or they're not feeling this. And it's like, oh, okay. So I can see it with them and I've become a little bit more sensitive to it with adults and their boundaries. And it's, it's been helpful for me. 
I think it's awesome too, especially if you can have those conversations with your kids. Cause I think so it's so it's a conversation that's so easily missed because we're all like, let's let our kids be kids. You know, they're little, they don't that no, they need to know because when they get to be, you know, 16, 18, young adult, you know, early adulthood, and they're going to have to start making bigger decisions. You know, I didn't know what boundaries were until I was like 37. No one told me what it was. Had I known, you know, things might have been a little different in my life. So it's good to have those conversations with them when they're little and let them know it's okay for even them as, as at their young ages to have boundaries. Um, so speaking of boundaries, your platform is about pivoting and adjusting to the pivot. And we've actually, we've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs about their pivot, their jump off moment and what that looks like. You coach people to do it, which is a different perspective because it's funny when people do it and they're not, they don't have a coaching mindset. It just, it's like, we did it. Like, just, just do it. And it doesn't necessarily work to tell people to just pivot and do it. So how do you, like, what's your best advice that you give to people who are looking to make a jump or a pivot in a material way in their life? So I think the biggest thing that I remind people of, it's not about one pivot. You know, I think we all we want to make more money. You know, it's not even necessarily about jumping into entrepreneurship. Every day is an opportunity. You always have a chance to make another choice. Um, and that's really what I teach people and, and help coach people on. We're never stuck. You know, I, I talk on the podcast and the book, you know, when I'm coaching people, we're never stuck, we're never lost, and we're never alone. At any given moment, you can use your power to pivot. And it's really about making new choices. Whether that is, I feel stuck in my career and I need to make a change. I've always wanted to to start my own business, but I've been afraid or I've been making excuses and now's the time. Um, those are big things, right? But it could also be as simple as, I'm going to choose to pivot in this conversation and not make it about me so I can actually listen to what they're saying. What I can choose to pivot on my way to work when I'm stuck in traffic and make a new choice so I'm not like road raged out when I get to work. Um, any moment is an opportunity to like switch your framework, you know, look at your mindset and, and you can choose how you think how you feel like you can make adjustments and it, it's at any moment. It's, it's big things, little things and everything in between. So usually I start with the little things because it's easier to make those little adjustments. Right. And when you start to make the little changes, you can see how powerful you really are. You can, you can start to see like, it's okay if I make this new choice, like one little new choice leads to another one, to another, um, the, the concept of massive action leading to success never felt right to me. And it kind of scared the crap out of me too. Um, it's for me, I needed to take those littler steps consistently to get where I wanted to go. What is it you think uh, the little changes you mentioned, what do you think it is about them that, that helps unlock that, that power or the being able to see it? Like, have you pinpointed what that is? I mean, there's part of me that wants to say they're, they're a little bit easier, but I think it's more about there's an ease to consistency with the little changes. You know, it, it's about sustainability and setting expectations. And I, that's not to say that there are people out there who can make one big jump after another. And that's great. But for me and, and those that I've worked with, like it, it's been, I need to make this little change, um, make sure that we're good. And then I can make another one. Let me make sure I can do this consistently because if I try to make that quantum leap, that big massive jump, 
um, and I'm not ready for it, I'm setting myself up for unreasonable expectations that ultimately lead to I'm not getting where I want to go. I'm going to fail. Which, honestly, you can see that failure as, you know, a failure or a success. You, you can frame... You can choose that. Yeah. I, I like to frame failure as nothing more than data. Um, because once you look at that data, you can pivot there and learn from it and make a new choice even in that failure moment. So it's never a failure. You're all, you can constantly improve from that. I wonder, I think, um, I, the, I know the big changes are scary. I think, thinking back, I think even the little changes are scary. I think the concept of change, and I think the little ones kind of prove that, like, I don't know, I'm wondering what you two think, if the little ones prove that it's okay. Like, if I change this one, like, if I go this way to work instead of this way, like, I'm still going to get there. Oh, wait, it's actually faster. Tur- it turns out I don't have to go the way that I have gone for years just because I've gone that way for years and things will still work out. Well, so I was going to say like, sometimes we also have to accept that big changes are needed. You can't always avoid them, but when you, you can look at, you know, like you just said, you know, I I can make the little ones and I'm still okay. I'm still safe. You know, every now and then we have to make that big choice. Like I, I had to move, you know, from, Philly to Northeastern PA. It was a big change, but it had to be made. Um, you know, sometimes you, there's circumstances outside of our control. We can't avoid it. Um, understanding that you're going to be okay anyway. Sometimes you just have to take that leap on yourself. There's, um, first of all, do you watch Friends or did you ever watch Friends? Oh my gosh, yes. The, like the, the like my, the the Funkos, we could do an episode on friends. Yeah, but go the, ahead. <laughs> the, the the more we talk about this, the more I think about Ross, Rachel, and uh, Joey carrying the stairs up the up the the, the, the pivot. Yes, <laughs> my wife's favorite scene ever. Um, and so it's fu- it it's funny because so I uh, was on a camping trip in the mountains. We were in the middle of nowhere. Um, I was, and I talk about this in my first book, but a very bad, abusive marriage. Kind of knew for a while where it was going. Knew I wasn't happy where I was. <clears throat> I heard a voice. We're standing in this on this camp, on this camping trip. He's setting up the camp. I'm standing by this stream, and it's very quiet. There's nobody there. It's early April. Um, And I literally, I took a breath and I heard a voice that literally said, this is where you pivot. Um, I didn't know where it came from or who it was. I just knew I had to listen to that. Um, And then after that, the next day we were hiking a mountain and I was like, oh, I get it. It was all about the fear. And I I was judging myself for climbing this mountain, um, thought I was doing it all wrong. And I kept hearing, this is where you pivot. Within six months, my entire life changed. But I often say it's funny because the universe talks to you in ways that you will understand and when you really need to hear it, that you're going to hear it. And that is why I I honestly think that because of Friends is why, because we're huge, you know, Friends fans in my family. Um, And and I, I heard this is where you pivot. And I also heard pivot (laughs) so um (laughs) you know the whether it's the angels were like speaking through ross geller i don't know um yeah so no it's so yeah i think there's um (laughs) kind of to your question rodney the small i mean it's like any habit if you do something enough it becomes muscle memory and so uh, what i like about the frame that you have on this is we hear about the big jumps and the big pivots more because they're grand and we are gravitated to grand stories. We don't necessarily care about that time that someone pivoted and made it about the other person versus me. Um, But what also comes from that, if you're consciously doing it, is a positive frame on understanding how you're pivoting to make the changes that you want to make. 
as you lead up to the big one. So I'm thinking about it in the terms of us. We constantly are talking about the big jump that we're going to make, you know, once we, we're in the position to do it. <clears throat> and I don't know about you, Rodney, but I sometimes, I mean, I feel shame. Like, why haven't I done this yet? Am I good enough? Is this going to actually happen? And we talk about that, right? Like, and then there's that worry and anxiety. But what we're not focused on is the fact, like for me, I don't end up focusing on the fact that we pivoted to start the podcast and then we pivoted to do this and we pivoted to do this and we made all these positive pivots, little jumps that got us to interview Kristen Bell and some of these, like all of these things that have happened as we've pivoted all because we're so focused on that big one. And it creates this like, okay, it's never going to happen. It's like, wait a second, we've been building this muscle. We're just not ready for that one yet. But we'll, when we're there, we'll be there. And I think it's a, I like that frame um, versus the giant pivot. I like that too. And I also, you just said muscle memory. I, I, was, I heard some neuroscientists talk about like how belief is formed. And it's basically something you think, think enough times. Um, can, forms into a belief. So it's actually kind of helping people question their own beliefs and like their place in it and like whether it is their belief or not in a very manageable way. Because if you start with, do I believe what my parents told me? That 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 can be overwhelming versus <laughs> <Yeah>. just like, <laughs> do I believe that this is the only way to do this particular, you know, mundane task or whatnot? It's about allowing yourself to explore. Um... And, and it's funny because as much as I talk about, I don't like to be uncomfortable. Those are moments when you definitely are, when you're questioning big things, little things and everything in between, like you're putting yourself in a new place. Um, And, you know, it's funny because we do always hear about those big changes, but I think part of the problem is that we hear, it's almost like we hear about those big pivots and those massive, like successful outcomes. And we forget that there probably were a million and one baby pivots along the way. And I I know I felt that when I first, when I first became an entrepreneur and I thought, well, crap, like I've been doing this my whole life. Like, why can't I do this? I'm a failure. I wasn't an overnight success. And I forgot that wait, this is part of the learning process. I've never done this as an entrepreneur on a massive scale. And I had to remind myself that even the, you know, the best, because at that point it was when I started my bakery, you know, even the best bakers, you know, burn a batch of cookies every now and then, or, you know, there's going to be growing pains along the way. The concept of an overnight success, does it happen? Yes. But more often than not, we don't always get that backstory because likely there was a seed that was planted way before. And then it was those little steps along the way. And I feel like we we need to talk more about those little tiny pivots and make it part of the conversation because that's what's going to encourage people to take those smaller steps and not hold themselves back because they think they have to be that overnight success. Because if you're there's it's easy to fall into if I'm not an overnight success, I'm a failure. You know, I didn't make a million dollars my first day in business. Like clearly or I didn't sell so out of cookies. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, you know, so I, I can't right? clearly I can't do anything <laughs> yeah. right. So I don't yeah. think there's such thing as an overnight success. Like I've been I've yet to hear of a case where it's like, yeah, that was I think there's overnight stardom. And I think we confuse the two. That's I think a good you point. You can become famous overnight. I think you can't become a success overnight. And like even that stardom was probably Again, I can't think of a case where somebody just has so much talent innately that they just become famous overnight. Like, it's because they've done this thing for years and years and years and years, and then they get seen by somebody on YouTube. Like, there's, the access is different, right? Like, you can, it can happen it can happen to people that it would have never happen to 30 years ago or 20 years ago or five years ago. But it, it's not overnight. It just seems that way because I didn't know about them yesterday. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Social media changes everything. We think that it's a good, good call out because I didn't know about them yesterday, but here they've got like six bazillion hits on YouTube and now they're trending viral and everybody is talking about this video. And, um, so it's interesting how we perceive that. 
Yeah. It's, it's almost like stardom. Stardom is stardom is success. When right. Stardom is, is just stardom. And it, I mean, how, how often do we hear about a star and then never hear about them again, but we don't think about them. And for all we know, I mean, we have no idea what's on the other side of that versus and when i think about stardom success. like i do not want that that's not what i'm i, I do not want all the things that come with that no. well you bring up a good that's a good point because if they're stars do they think they're successful like i i talk with people too like you know success is a measure of from you like you define your own success and i think it's easier to forget you know and and fall into that mindset of well they have a million and one hits on YouTube clearly they're successful well no not necessarily maybe they have money but they don't they don't define their success financially maybe they define it from another frame you know success is a personal story that that's like what makes you successful um so i think but i think it's easy to fall to that stardom just because you're a star you're a success tying it right back to it's not about you um and, but it is like if i see you as successful i'm seeing you as successful based on my determination of success and then i'm mad because you don't think you're successful and it's like yeah but you have different parameters different rules different boundaries or and you don't live up to my version need to of success. separate it yeah you're too outspoken. Yeah. You're not outspoken enough. You're too quiet. You're, you or know, whatever. even on the flip side, it's like, why aren't you successful? It's like, well, I think I am successful and I'm successful based on my own boundaries, maybe not yours. And just going, tying that back together. And you, you good. brought up a thing about, um, uncomfortable and it, it made me think of, I've heard people say, you got to learn to be comfortable. You got to learn to like discomfort. And like, but then it, that's oxymoronic. Like it's discomfort. Like I, it wouldn't, if I liked it, it would not be uncomfortable. It just, it just, I think you can learn, I think you can learn to make peace with it. Or like, I think I recognize when I'm uncomfortable. So I have to adjust like what I'm doing because it, it messes with the rest of my life. Cause like, I just, I don't like it. Like it's, it's strange, but I seek it. It's oh weird. yeah. It stretches you, but you have to accept it. There's a, I, I like it. to say it's accepting, an acceptance. Accepting. Yeah, it's part yeah, of yeah. life. It's going to happen. And it's good for you. Whether you want to admit it or not, it's really good for you. <laughs> it helps you accepting grow. It stretches you. Not yeah. equal. You don't yeah, have to I like it, it, but you have to <laughs> but, accept and, and it. It's this funny, it's this funny um, cycle, right? It's like you get uncomfortable so you can become comfortable in a different way tier of whatever you perceive as your life only to get bored and then get uncomfortable again and do it again and and do it again and again and again and it's this constant evolution you know, if you're if you're constantly growing but you're never I have done a question never done. yes never done. never done we're still cooking we're still done. cooking we're still baking all right we're gonna pause it right here we're gonna release the second part in just a couple of days in the meantime, if you hop back in our catalog, we had an amazing conversation with Tristan Cooper Smith. I know I say they're all amazing, but it's because they really are. We had a really good conversation with Tristan Cooper Smith, episode 40. It's a long ways back, but it just some parallels uh, to the stories, and we think you'll get something out of it. So while you're waiting for the next one, go back and check out Nold in the Library. Talk to you soon. Yeah.